So this is the Cartier tank. Now for a basic uh, steel version like this quartz, we're talking two to three grand for gold around about 10. Then of course, there's the Seiko tank. If you want to scratch that itch or you don't want to spend that kind of, well, this kind of money, or perhaps you're what's that? A new yet. Cartier Ten video? Oh, huzzah and hurrah. Rectangle. Or perhaps you're not willing or ready yet to spend thousands of dollars on a, a rectangular watch. I totally get it. Well, this is the best way to go. However, a few weeks ago, I found an affordable alternative from Seiko under a hundred dollars. And in my opinion, gives the modern Seiko tank a run for its money. Uh, in fact, actually I paid 60 bucks, 80 including shipping. So let's get into it. I'll do a quick wristwatch check wearing the Laurier Safari. This is the Copper Dial variation and I've got it on, not the uh, olive Malone strap it comes with from Riscani Watch Club, but actually their gray and black. I think it just ties this outfit together, the blues in this jacket with the coppery salmon uh, of the dial. And of course the blued hands all comes together. In my opinion, it's just a little pizzazz there, a little pop there of color. Yeah, I think I'm having like a second honeymoon <laughs> with the safari at the moment. Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show. So before we get into the unboxing, let's talk tank. Well, in terms of iconic status, it dates back to before wristwatches were even a thing or how we see and wear them today. The Cartier family were already a powerhouse jeweler for several generations to many royals, culturally important celebrities and nobles of that time. Louis Cartier introduced his first watch, the Santos, in 1904 for his best friend, Brazilian pioneer aviator Alberto Santos Dumont. Now we have covered that watch extensively as I'm a proud owner myself, so check out those videos for much more information. But essentially, Santos complained to Louis Cartier about the unreliability and impracticality of using pocket watches while flying, and thus arguably the first men's wristwatch was born. In those days, only women tended to wear watches, often on a lace strap. These timepieces were called wristlets. And for men, it took an entire world war for it finally to be transferred out of the pocket on a chain and fob and onto the wrist. As in the heat of battle, having it on your wrist was far more practical. Post World War I, the trend rarely took off for both men and women. After the war, Louis took inspiration from the newly introduced tanks on the Western Front, and the first Cartier tank was born in 1919. In many ways, it was a continuation of the design language of the Santos, but this time more refined and somewhat simplified into an understated bezel-less case where the strap flowed directly into the watch rather than having lugs like the Santos. Again, we see Roman numerals on the dial, along with a chemin de fer chaptering, vertical brand cards of the case, and a sapphire cobuchon on the crown. All features that remain very much to this day, astonishingly for well over a century now. The tank and its rectangular shape was perfectly timed, as this was the beginning of the Art Deco period, which flourished in the United States and Europe during the 1920s and 1930s. Just look at most popular watches from this age, from Rolex to Bulova or Bulova, Omega to JLC and so on. So many brands had their own tank-styled watches. And it made sense Art Deco was all about elegance, luxury, symmetry and technological progress. Things that Cartier watches are pretty much all about. Now, I'm just going to interrupt here and remind you to click on that like button. It's the best way to support the channel, especially if you want to keep seeing more free, independent content like this. Fast forward to the end of the 20th century and the Cartier Santos went in a more mainstream, even pop culture direction, you could say. Starting with the ruthless yuppies, as so wonderfully portrayed by the 80s chic of the infamous Gordon Gecko in Wall Street, this continued to today by being the choice of many music artists, but now with their custom bejeweled versions or skeletonized XL Santos sizes. The tank, however, over the last century, like a younger, smaller, more refined sibling, 
remained the choice of those with less to prove. Royals, like the late great Princess Diana, or celebrities and cultural icons like the boxer Muhammad Ali, influential artists like Andy Warhol, and classic film stars of the Golden Age, known for their stylishness. Steve McQueen, Cary Grant, Rudolph Valentino, Clark Gable, Gary Cooper, Audrey Hepburn, Alain Dillon, Jean-Pierre Melville, not to mention the likes of Jackie Kennedy, Yves Saint Laurent, Truman Capote, Duke Ellington, and so on. The list is simply endless. Come on, dinosaur, chase me. Let me see you do that. How would that go? But let's not forget, it was one of the most worn watches of choice by the aristocrats of this world too. Just like our very own posho turned Jurassic Park movie star, Hugo Mountbatten. Hang on a minute. Is that Jurassic Jeff floating above West Broadway like some sort of designer eyewear clad demigod? Siri darling, call my agent forthwith. I simply must get a partnership with Perso. So this came from Japan. I buy a hell of a lot of watches from Japan. Uh, my Navi timer, several Tudors, several Navi timers in fact. A quick knife check, as this is from Japan, using the Spyderco hawk bill uh, this is actually made in japan i'm not sure if you can see that there we go special japanese stainless steel anyway enough chit chat let's make this first incision <laughs> arigato that's so cool <laughs> look at the dog that's amazing thank you ah. so i don't know what that is some kind of tissue i think it is incredible okay and another package. I'll do drum roll on the box then. Let's do drum roll on the box. Bonus points for the quality of the packaging. Absolutely outstanding. Anyway, here it is, the moment of truth. Da, 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 da. Oh, nice strap. That can't be Seiko. <laughs> and even the head of the watch is, is beautifully wrapped. Oh, look at that. Look at that, really lovely size. Let's take this off the case back wow that is razor thin there's a little cobuchon zoom in a bit let's let's look at that dial it's got like um it's almost like a linen dial but kind of a little bit like meteorite like fossil that is gorgeous very art deco case hold on one second let me get my calipers wow 4.5 millimeters that is amazing uh diameter Ah, uh, 20, yeah, just under 25, lug to lug, 30, almost 34, got an 18 for the uh, straps, I did get a few 18 millimeter straps just in case, but this is pretty supple, um, I'm presuming this is aftermarket, is this aftermarket? Yeah, it is, look, I've never heard of this brand, but definitely better than whatever Rolex, uh, Freudian slip, <laughs> or whatever Seiko do. The Seiko and Cartier tank defines everything a modern dress watch should be. Slender enough to slide under any cuff, less complicated than most watches, with it only being two hands, understated, yet refined in the right ways. In fact, at one time, black and white tie etiquette in the past even dictated that no wristwatch should be worn, as it would have been considered rude to check the time at fancy swanky do's or events. Those days are long gone and people tend to pay more attention to vapid and solipsistic so-called influencers in big quote marks online rather than reading or studying De Brett's handbook. So essentially there are eight uh, Seiko tanks on the market right now. Half of them are solar, the other half is just battery quartz. Then within that uh, it divides again, you've got the larger size and the smaller size aimed at women for the smaller, men at large, but honestly that gender marketing or uh, uh, classification is a thing of the past. If you uh, want more period correct, go for the smaller by all means. And then of course there's gold tone or the choice of silver stainless steel. This is the SWR052 and aside from minor dial changes, it's very similar to the SUP880 solar version, which has solar printed on the dial and the dial itself in a very discreet vertical tapestry pattern. 
but the size, fit, finish is exactly the same. One thing to note is with the modern Seiko tanks, the straps they come with are absolutely terrible quality. So I highly recommend investing in some straps to really get the most out of it. But with both new versions of these Seikos costing around $200, I wanted to see if I could find something for far less. And voila, the Seiko Dolce. You are witnessing the creation of a new excellence in time. Seiko LaSalle. A perfect unity of the finest modern style and craftsmanship. Seiko LaSalle, destined to become one of the world's most prized possessions. Launched between 1980 and 1981, the Seiko Dolce. Exiline and LaSalle Collections was the brand's response to a growing demand for stylish, classic and quartz-based dress watches. A trend very much started in 1979 with the success of the Swiss brand Concorde and their iconic Delirium watch, itself breaking many records for its slenderness and in a wider sense part of a wave of Swiss luxury watches designed to fight back following the quartz crisis. In many ways, quartz lends itself perfectly to dress watches as the grab and go ease means that you hardly ever have to set it, especially if it has no date like these. And if you're like me and don't wear dress watches too often and gravitate more to divers and chronographs and sports watches, etc., is really convenient. As I'm sure a lot of my Italian uh, gentry out there will uh, already know, dolce means sweet in Italian, like Dolce Vita, but also like Dolce in a candy store. And for me, perfect name for it. This competition between the Swiss and the Japanese created some truly cool, creatively different, fun, and mainly forgotten about watches, especially from the more agile Seiko. Just type in Seiko Dolce into eBay and you will see exactly what I mean. So here, instead of the instantly recognizable chapter ring, they have made the inner rectangle of the dial a matte gold tone to contrast the outer section that is in an almost linen slash meteorite texture that glistens and plays with the light, giving it a very beguiling sparkle, reminiscent of a gold nugget. This style was actually started by what's called the starlight dials, found in some early 1970s Grand Seikos. A precursor to the popular snowflake textured finish we see on the dials of current Grand Seiko models. There are four delicately applied markers for the 3, 6, 9 and a double one for the 12 that also have the same pleasing play of reflecting light. Instead of thermally blued hands like in the Cartier, here we get faceted gold toned sword hands and again in hours and minutes only, as it should be. In terms of negatives of the Seiko tanks, well, you can't really complain about the water resistance being so low. I think it's around 30 meters, but it's a dress watch, so it's completely forgivable. The same as the real tank. Another little thing I've noticed is the old JDM um, vintage Dolce, Exelines, the Salles, they used actual onyx gemstones in the cobuchon because obviously sapphire is much more expensive not sure if these modern seikos use actual onyx that is something very cool about the old vintage offerings and the the jdm um, dolce releases that they use the gemstone i mean that's that's just that is pure class isn't it <laughs> it's great but what really elevates the dolce over modern and current generations of the seiko tanks is the case and dimensions the height is an impressively slender four millimeters making full use of the quartz movement's thinness but also with flanking stepped sides to the case that give it an undeniably art deco look again kind of tying back to what we talked about earlier Overall, the design, look and feel is far more original than the modern Seiko tanks and still able to scratch that gold Cartier tank itch. And for those that might be thinking it's a little bit too small, see how it compares to my unisex 1980s Santos Galbi that in fact is the same scale as the fully gold version worn by Michael Douglas as Gordon Gecko in the movie. This is the kid. Calls me 59 days in a row, wants to be a player. Ought to be a picture of you in the dictionary on a persistence kit. Yeah. Cartier is a bit of a family tradition. My mum has one, my aunt has one, my wife has one, um, Hugo has one. 
uh, now I have one, so and so on and so forth. But at the same time, I wanted something I could wear on Seiko Saturdays because most of my Seikos are kind of, well, you've got the Jujaro, which is very modern, you've got the Flighty, which is fantastic. But if I'm dressed more formal like this, I might not want to wear the Jujaro, the Ripley, you know, or the or the flighty. Ultimately, it also proves that, once again, you don't have to spend heaven and earth, an arm and a leg, to get something with a bit of class and to have it with a brand name that has one of the most important, if not the most important, richest uh, horological histories. As 80s fashions transitioned and in many ways devolved into the less formal styles of the 90s, endless trash! increasingly more sporty casualization coincided with watch styles also changing. As a result, dress watches in general had become less fashionable, and by the 2000s we saw this culminate in the oversized watch trend. Today, the watch world is fighting its biggest threat since the quartz crisis, in the form of soulless, derivative, uninspired and disposable technology that is ironically called the smartwatch. And so today, dress watches are the most unpopular of all types of watch genre. The most desired being divers, for obvious practical reasons. This explains why you can find such sweet deals, pardon the pun. In the tit-for-tat quartz luxury war between the Swiss and the Japanese watchmakers of the 80s, Cartier introduced their own affordable must the Cartier quartz-based tank watches, mainly silver, with a higher quality gold vermeil plating, over the regular gold plating of their rivals from Seiko, for example. However, they still cost over a grand on the used market today, especially if you want to get a good one, it might cost you a couple of grand. But for those on a budget who want a tank style watch, but from the greatest watch brand of all time, Seiko is undoubtedly king. A tank watch, in my opinion, is noblesse oblige in wrist form no showing off here or flashy loud brashness or vulgarity and while fashions change this seiko dolce will always look timeless just maybe not in a tracksuit but anyway absolutely pure class so i'm going to leave it there guys let me know what you think what is your favorite tank alternative please do share that in the comments don't forget to like this video very important indeed especially if you want to support more free independent content like this thank you so much for watching I will catch you in the next one. Ciao.